Oh, hello. Welcome to my channel. So this is day six of my seven day, day by day, back to back uploads for you. And what I'm going to do with these pages, or this page, is I'm actually going to cut a piece off. But I'm also going to cut a piece off here um, for tomorrow's page. So anytime that you want to say, for instance, cut a piece off to do the technique I'm about to do, um, make sure you're, you do it for like that day, the next day, and the one before. Because if you try to cut from over here, you'll be cutting your previous work, your day before. So, all I'm going to do is find my pencil. There it is. I'm going to pick where I want to cut it. This one I want to cut a little bit further over because I'm going to kind of stair step it some. So, we'll go about here probably. It's the same process as cutting it off and then adding it to another page. And then I'm going to grab my journal or my little cutting mat, put it underneath there, get my knife, and just slice that side off. like so and instead of trying to put that back in the book I'm going to save it for a later date and then now that I have that cover my knife I'm going to move this over because the good thing about this journaling block is she has different lines like this is a half an inch this is a quarter of an inch so I'm going to move it to where that line the line for the half an inch measures up to the next page. Grab my pencil and slice it down, or draw it down, sorry, just like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut that piece off. Thing. Save that for a later day. And now I have two staggering pages or whatnot. And I am going to go ahead and grab my black Posca pen because what I want to do, well, let's just do this. I'm going to go ahead and on the outside of this onto the next page, I am going to trace it all the way down, like so. Then I'm going to grab my drawing block, give myself about the same amount of lengths, half an inch roughly, and don't normally like doing this, but I'm just going to go ahead and trace it with my block there. There we are. Okay. And then I'm going to try and add a, I'll just show you, right here on this next page, a line as close to the edge as I can without going over onto the next page. If it makes it easier, you can put a scrap piece underneath. So we'll say, here, we'll just slide this under here for a second. Just so you don't have to worry about going over. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
just like that. And now, what I'm going to do is, for this one, I'm going to go in and make the um, little circle circles like I did in my previous page. Just on this one, though. in a bit just so you get, kind of get an idea for what I'm trying to do here All right, so you see we have that one there. And for this one, I'm just gonna do the check. The, um, you know, here, the little squares, like so. I'm gonna fill it in. So the little black and white squares. Feel free to speed this video up. Um, I'm just trying to show the different techniques and the different ways that I do it to give you the inspiration and hopefully you're crafting along with me or creating your pages along with me. I do tend to turn my book a lot, as you've noticed if you watch many of my videos. So it does make it quite a bit easier for me. I see some fantastic videos where people can keep their books straight and still be able to do like amazing pages. And it's like, I just don't, I, I, I've tried and it just doesn't work out. So... This is how I have to do it. Okay. Almost done. Each, whatever I did to this side, I need a mimic over here. So my audio just went out for, I have no idea what reason. So I'm doing a voiceover and all I'm doing is just replicating the check border that's on the other side of the page. Giving myself, it's about the same width as the other, the one on the other side. Because I like my borders to either match or coordinate. And... Um, on that one there, I kind of messed up, so and I knew it would bother me if I didn't go ahead and fill it in, so I went ahead and filled it in. Um, and I did speed the video up just a little bit through here because um, it that's a lot to voice over. Otherwise, this was a rather long video without it. But I'm just, I swapped out paint pens because I'm pretty sure my other one 
was just about empty. We I had used it through this entire month so far and with my writing and my doodling and whatnot it uses up ink pretty quickly. Alright. So I'm just continuing down. I'm gonna get them all filled in. Have you guys been making your pages as well? I hope so. I hope it's helping you in some sort of a way to make different pages in your books. And here, I am just, I've decided I'm gonna draw lines um, for writing and I'm doing my big line, little line, and on this one I made the lines be about, it's about, um, let me see, I'll look at my book here, it's about three quarter of an inch for the big line, and the little lines are about a quarter of an inch. I usually make all the little lines the same size, but sometimes when I do my bigger lines in between, I'll do half an inch or three quarter of an inch, and here I'm just going in and um, drawing over my pencil marks. I am doing it very messily just because it doesn't bother me one way or the other if they're messy or they're not. Um, I don't reckon anyone's really going to pay that much attention to it when it's all said and done, especially when I get all the doodling in and the writing. Although I do know that for this page I'm adding images to the sides. So it may look like I'm going to have a whole lot of writing room, but when it's all said and done, I won't. And here's where I decided what I wanted to go in between, and I finally figured I was going to put the half circles on every other little line, and then I believe I did the zigzag, just the messy zigzag technique in between the ones that didn't have the half circles on. And I only went for the half circles because you could see them and I wanted it to balance my page out. And this is where I was deciding and there we go. Yep, the little zigzags. That's probably the easiest doodle there is. And it doesn't matter if you do it perfectly or not. They actually look better when you don't. Okay. Sorry guys, I'm not real great at voiceovers. That's why I prefer just to talk in the video, but I lost the entire audio to it. So... I cannot thank you guys enough for subscribing, and I'm so glad that you've all been enjoying the videos. Ultimately, I just, I'm, I hope that they're helping you, giving you, like I said earlier, ideas for making your own and making your pages, they have similar techniques, but they all look different when it's all said and done. And I think that's why I advocate for the fact that it's super simple to do. You may look at some of them and wonder, wow, how did you do that? But it's just super simple, step-by-step -step type stuff. Now, I believe I pulled my images over. Yep. And on this day, I wanted two girls because me and my middle little worked together again. Um, and let me see the... Dresses are from Walk in the Park Duo by Dilusions. And here is where I chose that I was going to do the watered down London blue. So all I did was put me some of the London blue out on my mat and grabbed my water brush filled with water and watered it down and just painted it on. I love the water brushes because they um, make it easy to color large areas quickly. 
and I couldn't decide at first whether I wanted to have a little bit of the laid back lilac in or whatnot, but I believe I ended up choosing to go with all blues. So the next one is Calypso Teal. And I think, yep. We're gonna, I'm gonna do the same technique with my water brush. I just put some down on my mat and um, picked it up with that and allowed the water to blend and make it a lighter variation of that color. And then, let's see what else we got going on. I'm just doing some shadowing, adding some darker of the clip so teal in there. All right, and now for the heads. Um, I believe those are from the, I think it's High Tea stamp set by Delusions. Um, oh, and the skin tone here, it is Desert Sand watered down with the water brush. And you will see here shortly where I made a mistake, but it was a happy mistake because I ended up liking it so much better in the end. Um, okay. Here's where I decided I did want to add a little bit of the laid back lilac in. So I decided their hair was going to be um, laid back lilac and London blue. And all I did, I believe for all of the coloring, I used the water brush technique because I didn't want them to be so dark. Sometimes they can be too dark and I didn't want that for this page. And then over here, here's one of the mistakes that I made, but I fixed it. I'm not real worried. I was going for like the ombre look where her hair would start out being a really pretty purple and then it would blend up into the blue. But where I made the mistake was I allowed the purple to dry um, before I added the blue on and it was really hard to blend it once I did that but I think it all turned out in the end ultimately and here's where I should have just taken that blue over to the other one first but I didn't put it in there or on her and there you go you can see the stark separation if I'm not much mistaken I blend it down some more yeah I add the blue down towards the bottom more okay and then I just keep going to the top with it um, I believe I leave the candy canes the cream and white color or cream and black color but everything else I just go back in with the laid back lilac and the London blue to make the everything on the heads be those colors and I'm just picking random spots for them to go I try not to think too hard about um, the coloring honestly because like I said sometimes you get happy accidents and it works out in the long run just like here in just a second well there was two of them actually I didn't really want to put a warm color on the page so I thought I would try um, vanilla custard for their lips or here I'm doing London blue in her eyes but and there's where the mistake come in guys I made the eyebrows way too dark um, but I didn't like the vanilla custard so I went ahead and took the cherry pie and did their lips and I was trying to lighten that laid back lilac down by adding water to it doing like a ghosting technique but it just did not work out so I just said I was just gonna cover them up I grabbed a spare sheet of cardstock and I went in and covered it up to make it mimic the other one and I actually liked it a whole lot better that way to 
add more of the cherry pie in so that way it just didn't look off. I went ahead and put the little hearts in um, the first one's hair and then the cherry in the other one's hair. And then I decided I did not want the tea bag on. And here I'm just outlining um, the little cardstock around to match the other one. I'm going to stick it down with my double sided tape and my glue stick like I always do. Like I said guys, I am so glad that I messed up on those eyes because it actually makes it look better being with that other head. To me at least. Alright, and this is where we are sticking down the images. I apologize if it feels like I'm going so fast. Um, I just, I believe this video was like 45 minutes long and I was so disheartened whenever I seen that the audio was gone. Well, at least part of it. So I was like, oh no. Alright, and now we're just sticking them down. Again, I use the double sided tape and my glue stick because with the glue stick, the tape doesn't want to stick instantly. You, It allows you room to move it if you need to. And I always try to press the images down really well so that way it stays in place. Alright, and now for the heads. I love her stamps. These are the newer ones that she just came out with and they are gorgeous. Love, love, love them. Okay. And see what I mean about how it looked like you would have a whole lot of writing room, but once I put my images on, they just it cut it in half. And then cleaning up my glue mess like I always do. And I'm pressing everything down again just to give it that extra, you know, time to stick and make sure it sticks. And if there's anything sticking up, take your glue stick and give it a bit more. Because you may have missed a little spot, you know. I mean, it happens. It happens to me all the time. Okay. And then I believe... Um, I'm just gonna do like I always do and outline it with my black paint pen. I just like the way that it looks with the paint pen over it is all. I hope this page gave you some kind of inspiration. I know the video is kind of all over the place and it's sped up. Um, I'm hoping I don't have this problem again, <laughs> but I do, I hope that it gave you another idea to do, and I guess until the next one, I hope you stay safe and stay warm, and I thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.